I love to hear the gas in the audience when people realized how incredible it was. It was written out of every article and every movie and every book and everything. And um, what is your reaction? What has the reaction been to the film? This is the second place that it's screened, or uh, it was in Cannes. This one is probably the third. I th yep. No, fourth. Speak a little louder. Sorry. <laughs> um, the fourth. So it went from Cannes to uh, Telluride and Deauville, and uh, now we're here. And so what has been the reaction that you've had from people in the industry, people in the preservation movement? Um, you have a, an incredible group of folks that you've talked to, many, many, many interviews. What has been the reaction so far? Well, they're happy I did my homework. That's important. Mm -hmm. I don't want to make any academics angry. Um, but uh, it's been great. Um, I think what's different about this film, it's probably 70% new material. And um, it's actually made for the masses versus just being for um, academics. I want everybody to know about her, so um, I made it for her. Um, so I think it's important to make it as accessible as possible, and I think that's been the biggest comment that a lot of people can relate. Um, how did you get involved in this, Jody? What was, what was your first entree? Uh. Well, these things really do take a village, and I'm like, like the tiniest doorknob in the village. <laughs> um, Pamela came to me um, and told me a little bit about the story, and that was a very long time ago. I don't know how long ago that was. It was a long time ago. I'm surprised she's still here <laughs> and hasn't given up on me. Um, actually, um, I had seen her in a very long engagement, and I was surprised that she spoke French, because I speak French, too. Um, but um, we needed somebody... I'm so sorry. I'm doing, I'm, I'm working, I'm nervous, and I, I'm, I've got a throat <laughs> issue, but I'm going to work really hard now. Um, uh, I had seen Jody in a Jean-Pierre Jeunet film, A Very Long Engagement, so uh, when I saw that she spoke French, I was surprised I didn't, you know, research it. Um, but it was actually uh, Joan Simon, who's actually here in the crowd today. Yes, great. <laughs> Waving. <laughs> who uh, basically uh, said she's perfect, and then, um, you know, a decade later, no, um, a, a while back, you know, was it five years? At least five, maybe more. Uh, she continued to hang on when, at times, I felt that I was making a horror movie, but she kept going. <laughs> so, um, yes, it's, uh, making documentaries, especially something like this, it's very research intense, so, it takes a lot, a lot of work, a lot of people, a lot of money. Uh, we're completely donation-based. Jody, Jody basically donated her time. Um, so very, very lucky to have her. You've been in the business a, a long time, and you've been around some of our great directors. I see Marty was up here talking about her. Uh, but when did you first become aware of her? Was she somebody that was you aware of as coming up in the business? I knew absolutely nothing about Aliski Bache. It was just amazing to me. And uh, when Pamela you know, sent me the material, I just couldn't believe it. And I think that's what's so extraordinary about it, that you could spend your life in the movies. You could be a movie director and have no knowledge of it. I mean, when I was uh, coming up in the business uh, from the time I was three, I really very rarely ever saw another woman. Occasionally I'd see the lady who played my mom or I would see a makeup artist or a script supervisor, but there were no other female faces in the business. And as a young girl, when I was, you know, six or seven years old and I realized that there was such a thing as directing and I once saw an actor direct me and I realized that this was something actors could do, <laughs> I never thought that there could be a woman director. And um, even though as the years went on and there were, you know, uh, I became aware of other, other women, whether it was Lena Wertmuller or, uh, you know, other female directors. It just seemed like this pie in the sky, impossible thing. Yeah. And I wish that I had known about Alice Guy at the time. I wish I had known and, and maybe it would have uh, given me more confidence to start off quicker in my directing career. I was thinking about my own film school uh, career and, and how at the time, because it's so long ago, it seems now in the early 80s, that film teachers were restricted to what they could get on 16 millimeter. So if they couldn't get it, you couldn't see it. And so the scholarship was very limited. And I'm just curious how that scholarship may have extended now that these films are more available and what the academic perspective is now on Alice Guy. Well, I think what's amazing about this film 
uh, is the, the belief and the support uh, behind it and the, and the donors. Because it's not just about you know, researching and interviewing people, it's collecting the films, it's, um, we're, we're still um, raising funds uh, because it's very expensive, but uh, just to transfer the film and to make it accessible itself, besides the licensing, is extremely, extremely ex uh, expensive. So as an audience, this is the first time that you're actually seeing the most of her body of work in one film ever. Um, to the masses, because usually it's in film festivals, etc. But I wanted to make sure that you saw as much as possible, so you could really get to know her and her her body of work. Um, how many films have been found? She's credited with like a thousand films, right? Something like that. She wrote, directed, or produced a thousand um, shorts and twenty-two features. Uh, we found ten to twelve in in the making. Uh, there's definitely going to be more that will be found after this, so we have to keep looking. Uh, but that really just keeps adding. And also, doing a film like this actually opens doors to do films about other filmmakers that are women, that are unknown. Like, you know, my Metropolis joke. We don't want to see that over and over again. We want to see new voices that we never heard of that can influence a younger generation. But the collectors have a big role to play. Yes, so uh, a lot of collectors are either donating it, I've convinced, you know, there's a lot of stuff that didn't make it into the film. I basically went through her whole address book and every film that she could possibly make and found a lot of descendants of different people, so a lot of documents have been donated to different archives as well as the film. So um, I think that's gonna help uh, scholars, but again, the masses and schools to be able to see the films. We're going to take some questions from the audience. If you could raise your hands, but please wait for the microphone to reach you. That would be great. Um, I see Barbara Hammer in the middle. I'd love to call on Barbara Hammer. <laughs> One of our great film pioneers. Thank you so much, Pamela Green, for this amazing film, and Jody for helping and assisting and producing. And um, in my studies of Alice Guy Boucher, I have taught her since, um, I think, 85, when I was first starting to teach and researching. Um, there were stories that she threw her negatives into the waters of, um, I believe it was upstate New York, in the Finger Lakes. Did you run across this story? It, it, it seems like something you would have put in. Maybe it's a mythology. I can't put everything in there, and I don't go by hearsay, so unless there's some documents. <laughs> uh, the, the reason why we're finding the films is because a lot of films have been found, you know, underwater, frozen, in, in many different conditions, barns, etc. As far as Alice doing that herself, mm, I'm not quite sure, because this is a woman that spent the rest of her life looking for her films. So, um, or maybe she didn't think anything of it that she would have to struggle later to put herself back in history, but I'm not sure. I'll have to do some more research. Jim? I don't know that one That's okay. Amazing. I mean, I, I just have to tell you, I had no idea. And thank you, thank you, thank you. You built, the, there's an arc in the film that really blew me away. You bring us through this story about her work, et cetera, to that meeting where the women challenged the historians about where was she, where is she? And can you tell me how you chose to go to that point and then have that in the film? Are you recording me at the same time? <laughs> yes. Awesome. <laughs> also embarrassing for me, but okay. <laughs> I was like, wow, how could you do that at the same time? Um, okay, so the story is really told by four women. Uh, it's told by Jody, Alice, uh, Simone, and myself to move the story forward. Um, I always thought, and I'm assuming you're talking about the radio argument at the end, correct? Okay, that was always going to be at the end because I wanted it to build that after she had accomplished all these things, that she still had to prove herself. And I, 
I feel like we can relate to that today. You know, we're doing all these different things. I didn't go to film school. This is my first, you know, documentary. But in my day job, I feel like I've worked on 150 films of all kinds doing uh, graphics, etc. But I constantly have to prove myself. And I wonder if I was a man, if it would make a difference. But I felt that the radio was really kind of like the high after everything we saw. And it's also kind of like um, a point of taking off where we can go and find the films in a way and find the documents to resurrect her. So that's why I did that. I wanted to build to that. Who's back there? Thank you so much. It was so enjoyable and so enlightening. My question is about Gaumont. They really wrote her out of history. Why do you think that they never acknowledged all that she did? I guess it's also the beginning of cinema. I call that um, era the first class of Silicon Valley of 1895. I mean, who's Tom from MySpace? You know, the beginning of YouTube, or even, you know, the beginning of computers. Very few people get the credit. It's who's there, who's got the publicity. And those were throwaways. They're like, you know, you get a new camera, you get a DVD or an app of like what you can do with it. Nobody's taking it seriously. So I think that's partially because of it. And also, I think she, ha she did have a strong relationship with Leon Gaumont, and I, I think him dying, wanting to rectify it, it's a little bit of a Greek tragedy for her, because it was almost each time, and then, you know, he died and nothing gets published, but I also, the journalists had a choice, and they decided not to include her. So, I also think it, it's not just historians, it has to do with critics, you know, a lot of male critics, and you know, if we look at the landscape today, we don't have that many female critics either. And I think that's also, you know, something that was going on back then. So it's a combination. I don't think it's Gaumont writing her out. I don't think he took it seriously. He was clearly, you can tell, very introverted. She's more of like the extrovert doing things. And when he realized that it was something important, it was already too late. I think there's a line through as well that I, I felt very, very moved by that um, she didn't have much estimation for herself. That she keeps saying, well, I might have been the first, but no, I didn't, I wasn't the best. That um, the things that I did didn't feel important uh, enough or significant enough. And yet she held to this instinct that she had about be natural. Uh, I think we understand today how important uh, and how forward-thinking that was yeah. to make films about how people are, the rawness of what's real, and, and to allow them to speak in a way that's honest. And I think at the time, I'm not sure they valued that. I think they were, they were looking for the flash of Georges Méliès and for the, some of the early filmmakers that were doing these things that really stood out and that were, uh, you know, uh, artificial and theatrical, uh, operatic. Um, and they didn't really have the appreciation for the kind of instinct that she had. So that, that's what I take from it. Um. Yes, ma'am. Um, I have two questions. Oh, I'm sorry, I mean, just wait for the... Oh, sorry. Two questions. What did she do in Vichy, France? And the other question was, can you talk about her involvement um, with Planned Parenthood? And is that <laughs> film available now? Okay, still well, relevant, unfortunately, yes. Um, I do want to add one more thing to what um, Jody was saying before that. One of the things that attracted me to Alice was the entrepreneurial and artistic side as far as moving the medium forward. A lot of people don't get credit when, you know, a medium is, is worked on and, and finessed, etc. She really uh, worked the medium to see how much can be done with cinema. Planned Parenthood, that was a script that she did with uh, Rose Pastor Stokes, who was an uh, advocate, but unfortunately she got arrested and therefore the script uh, never came to fruition. And then, I'm sorry, remind me of the other question again? Oh, the Vichy. Um, one of the things that's a through line is she, uh, it becomes kind of like the daughter in a way and Simone becomes the mother. So she travels with her, uh, through the embassy uh, work that Simone did. So that's why, you know, she's in Vichy, she's there, she's, you know, I wanted to, a lot of people like, oh, don't, you know, put all that stuff in there, et cetera, but I wanted to, people to know that one of the reasons why she's also not known is she's kind of like a, a moving target. 
all the material that we have in the film really puts a GPS on where she is and also uh, you can realize why it's difficult to kind of maybe credit her a little bit because she wasn't necessarily available either. There's a lot of determining factors. Yes, back there. Um, yeah, love the film. Um, this question's actually for Jody because you said um, that because of her that you would have maybe gotten into directing earlier. So, and I know you've had such a great career. I'm just curious, like, is there something that you've learned along the way in your career that's really stuck out to you that you think about now and, you know, look back on or something like that? Well, I, I think it's, you know, some of the, what I find fascinating about the character is that um, she had uh, the technicianship. She really was a, a solid technician from the beginning because she had to learn everything. And, um, uh, but she still didn't have confidence in herself as a, as a filmmaker um, because of you know, what she thought of her role at the time. And um, I can relate to that. I think that uh, certainly with my first films, even though I was quite young, I was 26 uh, for when I directed my first movie, um, I, I had all of the technicianship that anybody should know. There isn't any lens I didn't know about. It wasn't like I needed all this technicianship, but I didn't have confidence in who I was. And uh, it is interesting that that, so that thing has to be learned by women sometimes. You know, it's not something that we're, uh, that's foisted on us when we're three years old and we make our first finger painting. Um, we have to learn to have confidence in ourselves and to think that what we have to say is worth saying. Yes, ma'am, over there. Thank you so much. I mean, the deep, I'm so emotional, so emotional just to, I didn't know anything about her, just to feel like, you know, I feel connected to her and I'm so grateful. And um, thank you. You're a shiro for making this. You really, you really are. Thank you so, so much, Pamela. You are a detective and um, thank you, Jody, for supporting and, um, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm a female director and um, I'm curious about the film about uh, child abuse. Uh, I just finished a film about childhood trauma and the long-term effects. And it I mean, just, it's so timely with what's happening with Dr. Ford and everything right now, um, women being squashed. She was such a feminist. Uh, a, and, um, but how can we see the films? Um, can you talk a little about, you mentioned you did a film about child abuse. So there's a, a Gaumont collection. That was one of the uh, French films that you're talking about. Um, there's a Gaumont DVD. Uh, it doesn't have all of them, uh, but it has a lot. Uh, the American films are very difficult because there is no collection. So that's something that um, I actually, I'm starting a foundation. Alice Guy will never leave my life. Um, <laughs> but um, I'm going to start that so uh, people can donate to help create a collection for her American films and maybe it'll be like a Netflix or an Amazon, somebody to stream these because I think it's important. Um, but the French one, there is the Gaumont DVD for some. Where, where are um, most of the films? Are they in Europe or, or in the United States? Are they scattered? 60 archives around the world, with many people, with many opinions. <laughs> Unlike the film business, how shocking. Um, yes, sir, over there. Well, thank you, Pamela, you're an old friend. And yes, Virginia, there is a Fort Lee, and I'm a member of the Fort Lee Film Commission. There was a, there was a industry back east, and the biggest thing I have to thank you, obviously, Alice, but to showcase the birth of the industry back east because that's when it was a diverse industry. You had people like Oscar Michaud, an African-American pioneer, working alongside on the same streets as, Oscar, as, as Alice Guy. So it was a very diverse industry that, as you well know, was less diverse when it went west. I love what you do. We're building a film center and we're gonna screen this film there and we're gonna have a star for Alice and your name's gonna be next to it, Pamela. I promise you that. Thank you, Tom. I'm glad you're not mad that I didn't show your face. The map was more important, I'm sorry. Oh, no, I show my girlfriend. I, my arm is gonna win an Academy Award in that. <laughs> it was about Alice, not about any one of us. The question I have, though, is, and I hope 
you think the same way as I do. Your work, do you think this is going to bring about renewed scholarship and new books and new documentation that'll tell the truth about this part of the cinema analysis story as a result of your documentary? That's why I made it. Um, you know, a lot of people, not a lot, but some might say this might be a little bit academic. Um, just to give you a little example, in the life of Christ, there's pictures of Alice directing. Those pictures didn't exist before two weeks before I went to Cannes because I was in the middle of uh, licensing something. And they said, do you want the, hey, do you want these glass photos from the life of Christ? Uh, what? Yes. <laughs> so they sent them over and, you know, Kasimar, who works very closely with me, we almost had a heart attack because it justifies the fact that she is on set standing behind a tripod directing the life of Christ. So um, new things are going to be found, but I think this really... Uh, just puts a dent into anybody who would question her to just do a little bit more homework and you'll find some more stuff. So we have time for one more question, sir, over there. Thank you for this great film. Pamela, I wanted to ask you about your use of graphics, uh, your maps, your, your, your family trees, and the way that you use that uh, in your storytelling. Can you tell us a little bit about, about, about that? Uh, yes, that's my day job. Um, I do a lot of those. <laughs> and um, I, I have a little bit of ADD, so I don't really have patience when I, I watch actually a lot of documentaries. So I get bored when I see a picture drifting for eternity. So how can I make it interesting for a younger audience? How can I bring these characters to life when there is no live action. So I try to do it, not myself, of course I have an army, uh, of people to bring it to life so you could have some sense of place, uh, sense of emotion, and then you add this beautiful voice. It's magic. <laughs> um, where's the film? Where can the people see this film next? What, where is it going now? Well, we don't have distribution yet because uh, we just don't. So please spread the word about that. Uh, we are going to London next and it will be hopefully in a theater in December in New York and LA, but we're still working on distribution. Do you guys really like this film? <laughs> do, do you feel that it should get distribution and be seen in theaters? then you need to really be vocal about it on social media because a lot of the decision makers uh, believe that maybe it shouldn't be seen. So please spread the word and uh, who knows? Do you have a website or a hashtag or you know, how We does that got work? everything. We've got swag. We've got <laughs> because we're donation based, we, you know, we try everything. We still have to raise $200,000 just to be able to continue to license the films. Wow. Um, but uh, be natural the movie dot com. Uh, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, Twitter, and whatever else is out there that's available. All right. Thank you very, very much, and thank you all for being here. <laughs>